Nasir, welcome to today's video guys. In this video, I'll be revisiting Adobe Illustrator Draw. After not using this software for over two years, I have no idea what's going to happen. So I hope this video is half decent. So I don't want anyone judging me. I've not used the software for a long time now. And yes, <laughs> this does mean I won't be using Ibis Paint X in this video. I know you guys are really used to me using Ibis Paint X, but unfortunately, I won't be doing that so I hope you guys like it I'm kind of switching the vibe around here I hope you guys like this kind of stuff I'll be doing a shading video not a shading tutorial so I don't want anyone attacking me and saying I was not explaining good enough or anything you guys have to say like that because this is not a tutorial it's just a video of me having fun to get reacquainted with the software but yes I will be explaining along the way so you guys could learn something but this video was not intended to be a tutorial with that said let's see if i can create something half decent i've already done a sketch i've already done a sketch i'm so i'm just going to be doing the coloring so let's do it so i already did this rough sketch of the image i wanted to use i don't know if i should do the outline now or i should just leave it where it is i'm going to leave it where it is and i'm going to do the skin so i'm just going to be focusing on the skin for this video so with that said, all right, um, I'm gonna create a new layer by tapping this, add a draw layer, then I'll bring it below. You know what, I'll bring it above first. No, below, definitely. And uh, go to the first brush tool and select a skin color. Um, is there any custom ones? I don't see any custom ones I like so I'm gonna have to create it myself so the skin is usually within the orangish red hue so I'm gonna use something mm, no all right something around here seems good for the skin all right yeah I'm gonna work with this let's test it out all right so first thing I'm gonna do is increase the size of my brush if you don't know how to use Adobe Draw, I already did a video on how to use it, the basics. So you can go ahead and watch that video. It's going to be in the top right hand corner of this video. So you could go ahead and click it right now to watch that video and come back to this one. Or you could just continue if you already know how to use the software. I'm just basically doing it really rough right now. It's going to be really, really rough in this video. Because this is not planned or rehearsed, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing something for you guys to let you guys see the behind the scenes process of how I come up with some of the things I do. Now some of you guys are probably wondering why I don't use the bucket tool. Well, it's something I got from using Ibis Paint. I don't know how it works in um, Adobe Draw. But whenever I use a bucket tool, it tends to have a very weird edgy effect. I don't know how to describe it, but it just doesn't look natural. So I prefer to color in uh, my entire image myself. The only time I would use a bucket tool is whenever I'm trying to complete something really, really, really fast. I just go ahead and just tap the areas I want to fill. But for the most part, I do not use the bucket tool. All right, so here we are filling out the skin um, any area that goes outside the bar that you can just undo that yourself by just using the eraser it's no big deal that is unless you are lazy then it would be a big deal but I know none of my subscribers or viewers are lazy so I'm not even worried about that yay there we go some skin let's turn off the sketch all right, so it's a bit rough. So we could go ahead and um, touch it up, but I feel like I probably should add some color to the hair. So I know I said I was going to do the skin only in this video, but I decided that I'm going to also add some color to the hair. So I'm gonna use a purplish color for the hair, a really dark purple. I'm gonna fill that in. just to bring some life to the image 
um, when you're doing the hair I would recommend not using black because black is really flat and lifeless it's not even a color it's a shade um, I usually use something within the blue hue whenever I'm doing someone's hair and it's because of um, the contrast between the orangish tone and the blue tone since they're complementary colors so they work uh, quite well with each other yeah but you can use the black if you want there are definitely cases where you would want to use the black it's just that in my work I prefer to use these colors just darken the value of the color it's simple like a lot of persons won't even realize that it's not black because the detailing of the hair whenever you're doing the shadow the shadow area of the hair you're gonna be using black anyway so there's really no need to use it for the hair itself just use it for details that's all I'm saying instead of black because in most cases you're going to need um, to see the pupil so if you have a black iris it's not going to work so dark brown all the way all right so I'm gonna add a white ish layer so I'm gonna put it in the blue hue and bring it as close to white as possible and this is going to be the eyes because in reality your eyes are really never 100% white also I'm gonna add a different layer for the eye and I mean the sclera I believe that's the name of it not the eye eye Um, I know the sketch is really messy. This video is not about sketching, so ignore the sketch. Um, to get the skin tone in the shadow area, I usually take the same color, um, I darken it a bit, and switch the hue to something a bit more reddish. This is just something I do at times. It basically gives it more saturation. I think that's a bit extra, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think that's a bit extra. So I'm going to bring it back a bit. I hope that. I think that's decent. That's what I was going for. Now, how do you know where the shadows are? You just need to know where your light is coming from. So my light is coming from the right and above. So here and here. So shadows are going to be below her neck and cast in to the left. So let's go for that. So first thing first you're gonna wanna do probably start off with the hair at the nose which will obviously cast a shadow. I'm gonna switch a brush for this one.
this video has been a real stretch so I'll see you guys in the next video remember to subscribe if you enjoyed watching me do this um, and just check me out on Instagram and all that good stuff I'll see you guys in the next video Thank you.